Спасибо большое. Я сейчас хочу обратиться к господину Чуселю, который очень хорошо понимает процессы, происходящие в Европе. Очевидно, что одним из таких универсальных инструментов поиска выхода из текущего кризиса становится региональная интеграция и ее углубление в Евросоюзе, и то, что прорыв в таможенном нашем союзе тоже произошел в самом начале кризиса. Сегодня говорят о более широкой интеграции, сегодня говорят об интеграции трансатлантической интеграции между НАФТО и Европейским Союзом. Другой проект, который тоже находится в стадии достаточно интенсивного обсуждения, близкого к реализации, транс-тихоокеанское партнерство. И вот если попытаться сложить чисто арифметически, посчитать долю ВВП вот этого интегрированного сообщества, Получится где-то 66-67% мирового ВВП. На этом фоне Китай с его 15% уже не выглядит так убедительно. А на мой взгляд, вот если этот проект посткризисный реализуется, это будет реальным ВТО+. плюс, Это будет попытка выхода из дахийского кризиса ВТО. А мой вопрос господину Чуселю. Как вы считаете, вот в горизонте в будущем, ну скажем, 5-10 лет, реализуются ли эти проекты и каково место России вот в этой мировой динамике интеграционной? Igor Ivanov, who, uh, who said I have to sit here for the second time. I have to explain a little bit why, because I'm, I'm an economist. Uh, I started my political career as Minister for Economic Affairs, then Foreign Minister, and pri then Prime Minister, and second time in Austria. You know, one of the world-class uh, economists was Josef Schumpeter, who said um, uh, the, the next century, this century, will be the century of the entrepreneurs. And this is true, that business people are always ahead, always uh, the first one to explore the opportunities, the possibilities, the challenges, the chances. Um, uh, Bill Clinton uh, said uh, sometimes uh, in, during his, his election campaigns, it's the economy, stupid, and I will uh, change a little bit, it's the innovation, stupid. Today it's all about innovation. You are looking for more growth, we are looking for more growth. And uh, the mystery behind uh, to get how to get more growth is innovation. Without the innovation, there will be no, no future for neither for Russia nor for, for Europe. And I think the problem is everything is today globally. Trade is global, production is global, financing is global. Only politics is locally. This is interesting. In America, in China, in Europe, in Russia, everything in politics is very narrow-minded, is local. And I think what business people, and a lot of business, business people are here, what you should break up is this mentality. So broaden the view, um, explore what is possible. And I think innovation in all areas, in business, but also in politics and in bureaucracy is a key element. Let me explain why. Uh, innovation, for instance, uh, in, uh, in technique, in R&D. I expect during the next decade to come sensational new developments. Communication, we are still at the beginning. Right? Uh, handies, uh, table, uh, table computers, it's just the beginning. Believe me, during the next 10 years there will be a revolution involving everybody, civil society, politics, business, etc. Transportation. Within 10 years to come, the driverless car will be a reality on our roads. Uh, think about cargo uh, development, cargo transportation. I mean, this is just uh, the same railway. This is the same technology like 100 years ago. There will be a revolution during the next 10, 15 years to come. They are talking about uh, uh, medicine, uh, robotics uh, to support elderly people. Uh, prosthetics uh, to, uh, to, 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 to help uh, those who have uh, problems with uh, specific parts of their body, uh, pharmaceuticals, etc. That there will be a revolution extending life expect expectancy, etc. Uh, take uh, into account uh, food production, agriculture, logistics, all these elements. 
So the next 10, 15 years will bring us a technological revolution. 3D printing will create a new industrial revolution in manufacturing. So and are we prepared for that? The question is no. We are mentally not prepared. We are politically not prepared. Our legal system is not prepared. So let's think about strategically what Russia, with all these brilliant scientists and people, innovators, inventors can do and what Europe can do. This could be a brilliant example for cooperation in all the, these aspects. Then the second point is human resources will be a very important uh, question. And uh, there is only one uh, thing uh, which is always underestimated and which is behind, behind the German, Swiss and in some parts also the, the, the Austrian success story. This is the so-called uh, professional education, the dual apprentice si system, hard to translate as uh, dual Ausbildung system. The professional education, how to get skilled workers. This could be an export article offered to Russia. This is something you desperately need. You need skilled workers. And I think to how to deal with, uh, with the younger generation and to give them the right impetus to get to find jobs and uh, to, uh, to develop their own possibilities is an important thing. And the second point is mi migration. Europe and your Russia have the same problem. You have millions of uh, immigrants, legally and illegal uh, immigrants. You treat them as well as we, we do it. That means not very good. We cannot exploit their real potential, so let's work together. What can we do uh, to, to, have, uh, to exploit the, 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 the skills of these people in languages, in culture, in, uh, in, in their ambitions to, uh, to make them uh, really an important part for us? And uh, let, uh, last point, uh, I think the visa regime is uh, an excellent uh, point uh, for Korea. I fully agree with you. Not only what you said, uh, so to say, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's so to say, something which uh, will change everything in Europe and also in Russia, but it's desperately needed. It is nonsense that business people, tourists, we have millions of uh, tourists of Russia coming now to Europe and vice versa. Oh, real problems. Uh, yesterday, somebody said uh, that uh, people in eastern part of, of Russia can easily travel to Hainan, to China, but with great problems coming to Europe. Why? So this is something uh, where this narrow-mindedness on our ministries of interior affairs should be overcome. So a lot of challenges, but innovation also in bureaucracy and political affairs is important. 17% of our, 17, one, seven percent of the GDP is uh, spent in public procurement. If you really know how public procurement is done, and I think in Russia it's the same like in Europe, there's no innovation at all. This is just the same, uh, the same status quo well, ten, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. So a lot of innovation is there, and if we want to have growth, we need innovation. <coughs>